hello and welcome to the Harold Gaming Channel. Today, thanks to the kindness of my patrons, I dive into Doom Eternal. No, not really. We are tripping the light fantastic in the wonderfully wacky world of Animal Crossing, specifically its Switch exclusive game, New Horizons, with my new player guide. Because yes, of course, as ever, I am so very late to the party, but extremely happy to finally experience this wonderfully wholesome, humorous and very quirky alternative reality. Now, this is my first time playing any Animal Crossing game, but I am a proud fangirl of this furry extravaganza now, and if you would like to see more Animal Crossing content on the channel, show this video some love and let's jump into it, starting with a bit of a warning, because at the time of writing, Nintendo has a one island per Switch console policy and the person slash player profile that launches New Horizons will be the primary user, the primary player choosing the island layout and name. All major progress in the island is linked to the first islander's activities. So if that player does not progress their home and the island facilities, none of its up to eight additional player islanders will be able to access any of the game's advanced features. It matters not if you use a different profile, if you buy and insert a different physical copy of the game or download an additional digital copy. One island per switch, no exceptions. As you can imagine, well, this policy has been met with much, uh, I'm gonna say, consternation by a large portion of the playbase. Now, if you have a large household of gamers, this could be a real deal breaker, but I share my island with a family member and I have to say we've had great fun coordinating and sharing the experience, so it hasn't been a deal breaker for me, but the warning is fair, I think. So disclaimers aside, let's talk about character creation, which is one of the first things you need to do in the game, but it's something that you don't need to agonize over because once you have access to a mirror, which is easily craftable and purchase, you can change your gender slash appearance to your heart's content. You can even pop a mirror into your inventory and stance dance your avatar anywhere and everywhere you go. There are only eight hairstyles to choose from at character creation, but you can purchase a further 16 styles and eight additional colors from the Nook terminal once you have progressed through the game a little bit. Timestamps below if you want to jump to the portion of the guide that talks about the Nook shop. Now let's talk about island choices because this is something you don't need to worry about because despite the fact that there are only four options at the start, once you have progressed enough through the game, our benevolent overlord Tom Nook will give us access to the island designer app on your Nook phone, timestamps below if you want to jump to that, allowing you to reshape the island and its waters to your heart's content. The one thing you can't do at the time of writing is expand the size of your island and reshape the beaches. However, considering the popularity of the game, who knows what the future could hold for New Horizons. Now there are countless Cribs style island tours on YouTube and below I'm going to link to a few of my favourites so you can see just how much scope you have to terraform the island. Honestly, the community's creativity is inspiring and I've got to be real, a little bit intimidating. The next thing you run into are villagers because you'll be sharing your slice of Nirvana with a host of fluffy friends. At the start, the game will select two random villagers from its collection of 391. Yep, 391 cute, scary, adorable, and often oddball playmates are just waiting for you to make them an offer they cannot refuse. That sounded a bit more sinister than I intended. But if you are worried about overpopulation, fear not, for only 10 of these incorrigible urchins can live on your island at any one time. If you want to know how to invite more kawaii pals to your island or evict some troublesome floofs, well, head down to the timestamps to jump to that portion of the guide. So let's talk about your Nook phone and Nook services, because as in real life, nothing works on the island without your mobile phone. Oh, that's a cell phone for my American cousins. Hey ho. Now, before the sun sets on your first day on the island, Tom Nook will gift you with a phone allowing you to access essential services and information applications. 
You start with just five, maxing out at 13 once you have progressed your island and home. So let's dive into each and every app. The camera is, well, it's, it's a camera. The X, Y, zoom in and out. The left, right directional controller pans and tilts, allowing you to frame shots. And there are filters so you can have that Instagram look if you want. You can also earn Nook Miles by taking photos too. You can also use the O button on the controller to take screenshots. And if you hold that button, you can capture 30 seconds of game footage too. If you want to get those screens and captures off the Switch without a capture card, you will need to link your Facebook and or Twitter account and spam your posts there. It's not ideal in any way, shape or form, but it's better than a kick in the crotch. The Nook Mile app is where you find the game's achievement reward mechanics. You can earn Nook Miles, which you can spend on plane tickets to Mystery Islands, or on attire, or on furniture, or on DIY recipes, or on all manner of outdoor paraphernalia, and much, much more. To earn these miles, you will need to complete all manner of tasks as well, from watering flowers, crafting, speaking to your villagers, and even being stung by a rather nasty scorpion. I kid you not. Every time you unlock a new reward, your mobile phone will beep, you open the Nook Mile app, and if you press the plus button on your controller, it will pop you to the current mini rewards at the top, which you can work through as you go about your business maintaining and developing your island. For bigger landmark progressive achievements, which are in the main menu, you can save yourself some scrolling time by simply pressing down once on the right direction controller, which will jump you straight to the most recently unlocked achievement reward. You are going to need many thousands of Nook Miles if you want to decorate and eventually terraform your island home with style, so do keep an eye on this. Your map shows your current location, your home, your NPC and player islanders' homes, as well as the public buildings, and if Red, the dodgy art dealer, is visiting your secret beach, and that is not a euphemism, there will be an icon there too, sparing you a trek all the way up your island. There will be a visitor most days who will set up shop outside the residence centre or will be wandering the island or even washed up on the beach. So do keep an eye out for them. These NPCs sell items, have mini quests for you and are linked to unique items, recipes and achievements. The Rescue Service app allows players to fast travel from their current location in case they are lost, stuck or just can't be asked to walk home. You can select a drop-off location if you're willing to pay the 100 knock miles or Russian roulette it for a free trip. The drop-off zones are your home, the plaza, the shop and the airport. The Rescue Service does not work when you are visiting a friend's island, which I found out much to my chagrin. Now, your passport is a bit of flavour, more or less. It shows a picture of your character, your character's name, an editable comment, as well as the name of your island, the native fruit, your birthday, your custom design creator ID. Time stamps below if you want to jump to the custom design creator information. And there are no commands to be won for simply editing it too. The DIY recipe app holds all the crafting recipes you have learnt. You can see if you have that item in your inventory or storage at the bottom of the item card and if you have the materials to craft it too. You can also scroll using the left, right shoulder buttons to tab through the different types of crafting you can do, the last two sections showing all the items you can currently craft and your favourite items to craft. To see what crafting materials are needed, highlight the card, it will give you all the information you need. Recipes drop from balloons that drift over the island all day and night. Balloons also drop bells and furniture and materials, all sorts of stuff. Recipes can also appear in message bottles found on the beach. So do run up and down your shore every day. And they also can spawn on mystery islands, so do look out for them. You can get recipes for villagers, just pop into their house while they are at home, and if they are crafting, they will happily share what they've learnt with you. Recipes can be purchased from the Nook shopping kiosk as well, being purchased from Nook's cranny store. You can also spontaneously think up new recipes when you collect certain items. The Islander Calling app is used to invite other player characters who live on your island to play. Up to four residents on one island can play simultaneously on one console. This mode has had mixed reviews, links below to a video about that. I have not ventured into this gameplay yet. 
The Critopedia app stores and records information about all the creatures that you catch. Selecting a critter will show you the information about it and when it appears in the game because many of the creatures that you encounter are seasonal. If you have donated a specimen to Tom Nook or Blathers, the museum curator, you will see an owl icon next to the creature's name. So if you're looking to unlock the museum, do check that before selling. All new discoveries should go to Blathers or Tom first. Sorry, you're going to have to miss out on the bells for the very first one. Bugs and fish sell for varying amounts, and I have put some links below to the wiki if you want to maximise your income from this gathering. Now, fish seem to be the best bell makers, but do keep your net handy because some bugs and butterflies can bring you a tidy sum. The Nook Shopping app is unlocked by purchasing 100 items from the Nook Shopping kiosk in the Residence Service building. The app offers all the same services you get at the kiosk, but on the go. However, if you want your daily free miles, do pop in and use the kiosk at least once a day. Nook Mile Redemption allows you to spend your hard-earned Nook miles on items. At the top of the list, you will find bell vouchers selling for 500 miles, and you can exchange these at Nook's Cranny for 3,000 bells each. Nook mile tickets cost 2,000 miles and can be used to travel to Mystery Islands, where you can farm resources and recruit villagers if you have an open slot, and you can trade them in at Nook's Cranny for 10,000 bells each. If you're looking to expand your inventory, and goodness knows you'll need to because your starting bag space is depressingly diminutive, then you'll want to buy the Pocket Organization Guide for 5,000 miles, which will increase your inventory slots by 10, and then the Ultimate Pocket Stuffing Guide for 8,000 miles, adding another 10 slots and maxing out your carrying capacity at 40 slots. The other must-have item on the list is the tool ring, which even tells you that it's essential and it's not kidding. It will set you back 800 miles, but will speed your tool selection no end and you will honestly wonder how you managed without it. Trust me. Once your island has reached three stars and KK Slider has crooned his way through his very first concert, you will unlock the Island Designer tool and you will want slash need to purchase the waterscaping and cliff construction permits, both setting you back 6,000 miles each. And if the Dirt Path Nook freebie is not your cup of Earl Grey tea, there is also Path Patterns sold here too. Now, another must-have is the Custom Design Pro Editor for 800 miles, which allows you to create your own designs for clothes and hats and tops, as well as paintings and paths and much, much more. You can even download other people's designs, and we will dive into that in more detail when we talk about the Able Sisters clothing shop. Timestamps below if you want to jump to that now. You will also find additional hairstyles and colours here too, along with lots of recipes for all manner of items and decorations for your home and island. The best friends list is, well, it's a list of your friends on the platform. It shows friended players and allows you to message them. This app is unlocked when you go to the airport and request that the island is opened up for visitors. The chat log app is, well, it's a log of all your chatter between you and your friends, and great for not missing any tells. Onto the custom design app and a little guide to Nook's Cranny and the Able Sisters shop unlocking. Now the design app allows you to create pixel art. Now again, you can create paintings and patterns and clothes which you can display, wear and decorate your island with and share those designs with others once you have unlocked the Pro tool from the Nook Mile Redemption store. You will need to have the Able Sisters clothes shop on your island to share designs with others and others with you. So to entice the Able Sisters to your island, you will need to have built Nook's cranny, the shop. So here is what you need to do. First of all, you need to pay off the initial 5,000 miles for getting you to the island. You need to upgrade your tent to a house and donate five unique bugs and fish to Tom Nook. Then Tom will call his friend Blathers, who will ask to move to the island. You need to put up Blathers' tent, decide where you want it. The next day, you head into Nook's tent 
and speak to Timmy and Tommy who are looking for supplies to build a shop. So you're going to donate 30 softwood, wood, hardwood and 30 iron ingots. You're going to need to visit Mystery Islands to get all the iron you need if you want to do it in a single day. Once you have gifted Timmy all the materials you need, he will give you a pack and you will get to select again where the shop is located on the island and the following day, Nook's Cranny will open. But the journey is not ended there because once the shop is open, Mabel the very cute hedgehog will come to visit the shop and have a chat with Timmy and Tommy to discuss selling her clothes on the island. The day after she will appear in front of the resident service building selling clothes. You will then need to purchase at least a 5,000 bells worth of attire from her over two days, at which point she will let you know that she's moving to the island with her sister Sable and setting up shop. Day, you will again get to select where her shop is. So congratulations, you now have access to all the clothes you will ever need and the design booth because it's here you get to share and save other people's art and clothes to your design app. Now before we leave the Able sisters, a word about Sable. She's the seamstress working diligently at the rear of the shop. If you want to customise your furniture's fabric, you're going to have to win her over because at first she will be quite stoic to say the least, but persist and speak with her every day because once you have beaten her down with your winning personality, well, she'll give you access to all her exclusive patterns. So the Island Designer app is unlocked once you have a tier three island and KK Slider has done his first concert. And yes, this is the terraforming tool. Tom Nook will give you access to path creation, but via the Nook Ma Redemption store, you can purchase permits, which will allow you to reshape the land and water, bending the world to your creative will. Side note again, just to reiterate, you cannot, at the time of writing, change the beaches or increase the landmass of your home island. Now, there are seven path designs to choose from, but you can create your own via the Pro app tool or download other players, giving you almost limitless creative scope. Below, I have linked some of my favorite island tours so you can see what can be done with enough time and imagination. Now, if you're wanting to know about raising the rate of your island all the way to that vaunted five stars, timestamps below. So let's dive into how you can get more furry friends to come and live on your slice of paradise and how to get rid of them too. So everyone starts with two villagers randomly selected by the game. So you are stuck with them until they ask to leave because you cannot hit them with shovels until they flee. You cannot ignore them or be mean to them either until they depart. Please don't do that. Part of the game's mechanics is the natural turnover of your islanders. So here's how it works. Two weeks after a new villager has moved into the island, a random villager will voice their desire to move on. You can allow them to move on or persuade them to stay. If you choose to let them go the next day, they will pack up their house and then you can hunt for a new friend. Please, please be kind, no furry abuse. Okay, so now that we have eviction out of the way there are three primary ways to invite animals to live on your island mystery island tours the campsite and amiibo cards mystery island tours will spawn a random villager if you have an open housing slot on your island so if you have a specific animal in mind buy a metric butt ton of tickets and hope that the rng gods smile upon you once you have found the villager you want just have a chat with them. The first conversation is just a quick, hello, who are you? And then you speak to them a second time and you get the option to invite them to live on your island. Now, let's talk about the campsite. So it can be built once you have upgraded the residence services to its full plaza glory. You get a building pack, place it where you want, and the next day you have a campsite. Animals will come to visit by the campsite and if you have a free slot on your island, you can invite them. The very first visitor to the campsite you must invite to move in. They will not leave until you do so. I got Huck. 
it's it's too soon to talk about it. Anyway, after the first camp site to visit it, you have choice, hooray. So if there are free slots on your island, you can invite them. And if all the slots are full, the camper can request another villager to move out. There you go, another way to get rid of somebody. Now, the last option is via Amiibo cards. These are Nintendo cards and figurines that you can scan via the Nintendo. You access this function via the Nook kiosk and invite that specific villager to your campsite. To get the villager to move in, you will need to jump through a few hoops. So there are crafting quests that you're gonna have to do directed by them, and it might take up to three consecutive visits to win them over, but stick with it, you'll get there promise. So let's talk about bells because you're going to need some. Upgrading your house, building villager houses, erecting bridges and inclines and decorating your island will all cost you a lot of bells. A lot, a lot. So here's my TLDR guide to making ends meet. On your island, one of your rocks will spawn money each day when smacked. Now you should be doing this anyway because rocks are the only way to spawn iron, to spawn clay and to spawn rocks, clearly. So smack those bad boys every day. Also please hit the money rock with a shovel. Make sure that the shovel is not near the end of its durability as well or you could pop it and lose bells. Do not use an axe. Don't. You will not get all drops possible using an axe. It's just too slow. And you also need to brace yourself as hitting rocks will give you a knock back. And if you don't hit consecutively, you're not going to get all the possible drops. So I have planted bushes. You can put something behind you. Digging holes is fine too. Just brace yourself and do spam that interact button for all your might until nothing else falls out. You can do it. I believe in you. Whenever you see a fish, fish it. I could, I could probably leave now. No, fish, fish. The method I use is blind fishing. Okay, so once you see that a fish is interested in your line, close your eyes and listen for the bloop. You will get better over time, I promise. Links below to the bell price for all fish. Now you can spawn fish with bait crafted from one manila cram you dig up on the beach. Just look at the beach and look for the squirty sand. You will need open fish free water to do this. It works in the sea, it works in pools, it works in rivers, anywhere, no fish, throw it in, spawns a fish, catch it. Fish a lot capture bugs. As you're running around the island, do capture them, but don't go out of your way to do this. Some bugs have great value. This is true, you're going to need to capture them to complete the museum, but if you're farming bells, fish are better. Now, once you have Nook Scranny, there will be special items each day that the brothers will buy for twice their normal retail price. You can make a lot of bells if you have that recipe, but if you do not do, check the Nook shop or hope for a lucky drop of that recipe that day. I have missed so many days. It's not even funny. Each day on the island, you'll find a glowing patch of the ground. Dig it up, don't cover it over. What you want to do is bury some gold. The maximum amount is 10,000. And in three days, your money tree will grow and you will have 30,000 gold for your trouble. The last thing is time travel. Yeah, you can skip backwards and forwards in time, spawning endless money rocks and resources. And I have not done this, the traditional soul that I am. Or coward, probably. Bit of column A, bit of column B. But it is a part of the game. You're not going to be penalised for it. There's even some funny uh, animations related to it. So I haven't done it. So links below to a relevant guide for you if you want to do a bit of time travelling. A quick note on tools and how they work and how many uses you have. So the flimsy axe gives you approximately 40 strikes. The axe and the stone axe approximately 100 and the golden axe approximately 200 strikes. You can reset the durability of all but the golden axe 
by using a customization kit on it. How do you get the golden axe? Well, the DIY recipe for the golden axe is unlocked after you break 100 axes. And if you're like me, that will be the first golden tool you will unlock if you are harvesting all the wood on your island daily. Yep, it just pops into your head after your hundredth axe explodes in your hand, and who can blame you? Also, about durability. Hitting a house, a fence, even a villager will not incur durability losses. Hitting a rock or a tree will, but again, don't use axes on rocks, they're too slow. Always use a shovel. On to nets. So a flimsy net can capture about 10 bugs. A net can capture about 30, and that includes the colourful and star net and the outdoorsy nets. They are rewards and you can buy them from the upgraded Nook's Cranny shop. All the same as the one that you can craft, 30 bugs only. The golden net, on the other hand, can capture 90. To unlock the golden net, well, you're going to have to complete the bug section of the Critopedia. Many bugs are seasonal and the game runs naturally in real time. So if you want to unlock this fast, you're going to have to time travel. And again, quick reminder, reset your ability, all but the golden tools customization kit. I'm gonna keep saying that, it's very handy. Now let's talk about durability because again, nets only incur durability losses when actually catching a bug. So again, hitting a tree, a door, your friend or villagers will only incur their wrath. Nothing else. Let's talk about slingshots. So a slingshot will pop approximately 20 balloons and that goes for the colorful and outdoorsy variants too. The golden slingshot will pop approximately 60 balloons. This is do not incur durability losses. And again, you can reset the lower slingshot with a customization, but not the golden slingshot which breaks my heart, it really does. The DIY recipe for the golden slingshot is unlocked after you shoot down a whopping 300 balloons. So get popping, boys. On to shovels given to you by Blathers. Okay, so the flimsy shovel will dig up approximately 40 things. The upgrade to that is the shovel, the colorful shovel, the outdoorsy shovel, they all dig up approximately 100 things, and the golden shovel, approximately 200. Shovels only incur durability losses when digging something up or when smacking rocks. So feel free to dig as many holes in the ground as you like, as long as you're not digging them up, and be careful not to fall in them because you can, and I, I have myself pole vaulted right into a hole my finest moment. Um, now, again, you can reset the durability by customization kits, just not on the golden shovel. So how do you unlock the golden shovel, you ask? Well, to unlock it, you're going to have to assist Gulliver 30 times. So he washes up on the beach occasionally, and you need to help him call his shipmates, although I feel like there is a conspiracy to murder him going on. He's just blissfully unaware. Oh, ignorance truly is bliss. So there you go, 30 times, Gulliver, good luck. He also gives you some awesome and cool stuff and Egyptian statue and things, it's very good. So watering can. With the flimsy watering can, you can water 40 dry squares. Yeah, it does not count flowers, it counts the dry squares you are wetting. So the upgraded normal watering can, the elephant watering can, the colorful and outdoorsy ones that you can buy and achieve, they all water 60 squares, and the golden waters 180. Now, the flimsy watering can on use waters one square. The watering can, as well as its colourful and other bonds, blah blah blah, they water four squares at one time, and the golden one, I think it's nine or ten. Talking about durability, to be clear, watering the same square repeatedly will not incur additional durability, just the first four counts. The golden watering can recipe is unlocked after attaining a five-star island rating, and I got mine today, so I'm quite chuffed. Again, durability can only be reset with customizations for the lower tools, not the golden tools. Although I'm thinking about starting a petition. 
Finally, we come to the fishing rod, and here it gets a little bit more complicated. The flimsy rod will catch between seven and 10 fish, depending on the size of the fish. Larger fish inflict more durability loss, at least that is the current working hypothesis. So the fishing rod, along with the colorful and outdoorsy and the fish fishing rod, <laughs> all capture 30 fish, approximately, and the golden fishing rod, 90 like the net the golden fishing rod is unlocked after you have completed the fishing section of the Critopedia. So again, you're going to have to time travel if you want to speed this up. And again, you can only reset the durability on the lower levels of the tool. Let's talk about your island, how to progress it, how to get your island rating up, what to do. Well, the game will guide you. Tom Nook has a chat option where you can ask him what to do next. This will more often than not point you in the right direction. Complete the tasks he assigns you and once you have, go back and talk to him to like finish off the quest. If you do not complete his tasks, you will never progress through the game, you will never unlock terraforming, let alone gain a five star rating. Here's my kind of rule of thumb guys. So, Complete all the NPC requests, all of them. Upgrade your house. It's just fun to have new rooms to explore and decorate every morning. I really enjoy it. Buy all the things you can from the merchants when they visit. Make sure when you are capturing a bug or a fish, you hand the very first um, specimen of that species either to Tom Nook at the start or once you've unlocked him to Blathers. Once you have been given a shovel by Blathers, make sure that he assesses every fossil you uncover and gift him any types that he hasn't already received. This is the only way to unlock and upgrade the museum and you're going to need it. And also it's just beautiful. I absolutely love the museum, it's, it's gorgeous. Build as many villager houses as you can as fast as the game will allow you. Invite as many villagers as fast as you can to your island because if you have an empty slot and you haven't filled it, you haven't decided who's going to live there, the game will select a random villager for you and move them in and there's nothing you can do about it. So keep that in mind. Although, you know, I think I looked out because I got Whitney and she's, she's lovely, great singing voice and Talking about villagers and Whitney, hi hun, interact with your villagers. They give you gifts and crafting and it's just fun and they're odd and humorous in equal measures. So do that, you, you'll like it. Build bridges and inclines. You don't need a huge amount of them, but they do help your island rating quite a lot plant flowers and steal them from islands if you don't have that type of flower on your island. Just dig them up and put them in your bag, take them home and plant them. The same goes for trees. If you find a non-native tree on a mystery island, here's what you do. You eat a fruit, you dig it up, you pop it in your bag, you take it home and you plant it. You can populate your island with non-native fruits, which sell for many more bells than the island's own fruit. I'm peaches, by the way. N many, many peaches. Okay, so keep your tree count under 220. If you have too many, Isabel will let you know, but you're not getting a five-star rating if you have more than 220 trees. It's not happening. Fill your island with stuff. Now, it's wonderful to have a picture-perfect dream island, but the game does not rate aesthetics. It's all about numbers. However, do not drop items. They are considered litter and will lower your island rating. Natural litter like shells and tree branches and star fragments. That's so funny. I love the star. Okay. But they are not considered litter by the game. It's only the items that you drop do not have more than 15 at any one time. That includes wood that you chop. So if you go chop all your trees, leave it all around, do pick it all back up again. Trust me, you'll lose your status if your island is littered with dropped stuff. Do put indoor items like furniture outside. There is no such thing as water damage in Animal Crossing, so go nuts. 
And also do put outdoor furniture and the weird stuff that you get, like Godzilla statues, outside as well. Godzilla is obviously optional. You could have a giant robot instead. I'm not gonna judge you. Okay, so once you have a three star rating, lay paths using the construction app. I don't think you need to do this, um, and, and you don't really need to terraform your island to the nth degree either, but a bit of structure like pathing will help you kind of get to grips with decorating will help you, it helped me. So here's the kind of compact, as much as I can, information about what you really need to do for that five star rating. So you must have unlocked the KK Slider concert. You must have at least nine villagers. You must have Nook's Cranny and the Able Sisters shop. It doesn't need to be upgraded, but you must have them. You must have approximately 665 plus points in development and about 250 plus points in scenery. So what the hell are scenery and development points? Okay, don't panic, it's mostly fairly straightforward. So scenery points are gained by a DIY recipe items that you place outside and trees and flowers. One fully grown tree equals one point, but you can only have 190 points coming from trees. The rest must come from flowers and DIY items. So, flowers first. One full-grown flower in bloom is one point. One freshly planted flower is half a point, and the intermediate stage, or if you've accidentally grabbed the bloom, is 0.7 of a point. So, plant lots of flowers. Personally, I lined all my paths with at least two rows of flowers, and that seemed to do the trick. Now, DIY placed items are a little bit complicated and are dependent on the number of blocks the item covers, which you can see in the crafting recipe information at the top here. Here we go. So items that are three by one, three by two, and three by three earn you a point each. For the rest, it's to do with the space that it takes up. The mechanic of the game breaks up the island to eight by eight blocks and how much stuff you have in that block determines your points. So it's a huge subject. Links below to a brilliant, brilliant deep dive if you really want to go down that rabbit hole. So the TLDR version is don't duplicate items in close proximity. Don't fill every inch of one of those eight by eight areas. I'll show an 8x8 area somewhere on the screen right now. So it was DIY, flowers and trees, for scenery, where do development points come from? Well, each fully upgraded communal building, so say the residence centre plaza, the Able Sisters shop, the upgraded Nook's Cranny, are all worth 15 points each. Bridges and inclines are worth 15 points each. You can only have eight inclines on your island, so do bear that in mind. Purchased furniture counts towards development points, so spend your bells in both Nook's Cranny and via the kiosk. You can put indoor furniture outside, but placing specifically outdoor purchased items outside gives more points, which makes sense. Also, the higher the value of the item you place outside, be it indoors or outdoors, increases its points value. And as to how to figure out how many points they are, well, it's the same rule as a DIY recipe items. Now, you can craft different types of fences in the game, but the game will gift you 50. Do put them down, because if you don't, Isabelle will let you know that your island needs more fences and each fence piece gives you 0.2 of a point. So, there you go. I'm gonna level with you. I got my five star rating today, yes, hooray. Oh. But honestly, my island is basic. So don't think that you have to craft some, some gothic masterpiece to get that top rating. Make what you want, use what you have, and just have fun. Don't stress, it's a numbers game. It doesn't have to be perfect. Mine is far from it. That is my beginner's guide to Animal Crossing. I hope that it's helped anyone wanting to jump into this beautiful game. There's a lot of stuff. There's more stuff I haven't gone into, but this is kind of the basics. 
and it's about 17 hours long so we'll come to the end give this video a like and leave a comment if you want to see more animal crossing content on the channel and if there's enough demand i might even buy a capture card and mess with all that technology and blow myself up just for you and you know whilst you're down there in the comments telling me all the things that i got wrong and i'm sure there are many please do show some love to cody kildare carb molini jolly joe star dark griever and all my wondrous fantabulous patreons without whom I would be unable to dedicate the time and resources I do to my channel. I can never thank them all enough. You are awesome. If you would like to join my band of nerdy awesomeness, come and talk to me on the Discord and stuff. Well, there are links to my Patreon page below. Now, I hope you will come back and join me again very soon. But until then, stay safe, stay awesome, and thank you so much for watching.